Hello and welcome to our roundup of the European Parliament's plenary session here in Strasbourg. The last before European elections taking place between the 22nd and 25th of May. The week saw votes on closer European banking union, supplementary pension rights, possible new sanctions against Russia over the growing crisis in eastern Ukraine, and a new boost for EU disaster relief. But we begin our coverage with the growing threat of civil war in eastern Ukraine and Parliament's efforts to help find a peaceful and democratic solution. The EPP group called for new sanctions over provocative pro-Russian actions in the east of the country. The EPP also wants the EU to sign free trade agreements with Moldova and Georgia within the next few months. Both are former Soviet republics and both are under threat from Moscow. In his last press conference as EPP Group President, Joseph Dole said Russia was playing a risky game by posting an estimated 40,000 troops on its borders with eastern Ukraine. I believe the Russians are playing with fire, and I already told many journalists yesterday, we haven't discussed this enough with Putin. It's tough to work with this guy, I know, but now it's gone too far. He doesn't respect borders anymore or international law. This can't go on. Dole added that stronger measures against Russia were unavoidable. Now we have to initiate sanctions. We don't have an army and we don't want to start a war. We can't start a war. But now the sanctions have to be made tougher. And we certainly know what it means for Europe when we use sanctions. It will hit us hard too. Although not a member of either the EU or NATO, Ukraine's territorial integrity and its very future will surely play a key role in the upcoming European Parliament election campaign. This week also marked an historic vote in favor of EPP-backed legislation to make Europe's banks safer for citizens and the financial system as a whole. The final part of the banking union, the so-called single resolution mechanism, will help better protect taxpayers against the very failure of banks supposedly too big to fail. The banking union includes a harmonization of national deposit guarantee schemes and a centralized system to wind down troubled Eurozone banks. Gunnar Hookmark is EPP vice chair and an author of the 400-page thick banking union legislation. He said taxpayers had suffered enough at the hands of reckless banking policies and insufficient safety guarantees. I'm proud of this legislation because it means that taxpayers will not make losses on banks anymore. Those who will make the losses are the shareholders and um, those who are financing banks. They will all know that they have the same risks as everywhere else in the economy. So we have in that sense restored market economy. Hookmark also said the Directive on Bank Recovery and Resolution of Credit Institutions would help restore banks' ability to provide credit to small and medium-sized businesses. When banks are getting more credible, as they will be, banks will be able to finance more investments. So small and medium enterprises will have a better future with this. Advocates say the new legislation will help prevent a repeat of the banking sector meltdown which still haunts financial markets even today. Pension funds were among those badly hit by the banking crisis. Now the pension rights of workers coming from other EU member states will be guaranteed thanks to new rules drafted by EPP group member Ria uman -Reuten. Until now, EU workers had large problems building up supplementary pension rights when they worked outside their home country. Now workers as young as 21 and those who work a minimum of three years, as opposed to the old rule of five, will be eligible to start building a pension. What we arrange now is that supplementary pensions are not longer lost. That means when you worked three years and you built up a supplementary pension, then you keep it. Your rights are perhaps dormant, but you have an equal treatment with the active worker or with the pensioner. Around six and a half million people within the EU are employed outside their home countries. With austerity measures squeezing state pensions, the need for a second retirement nest egg is greater than ever. 
but long waiting periods have meant foreign workers cannot start building up their pensions, a disincentive which hurts the free movement of workers within the EU. Ria uman Reutchen's message to them? Europe cares for those who use the free movement of persons. Now, thanks to her efforts, workers can rest easier that they will not put at risk their future retirement money by seeking work abroad. Finally, the EU Solidarity Fund, providing national and inter-regional disaster relief, was signed off by Parliament thanks to strong EPP group backing. It means that the EU can in future move faster and with greater funding to help people in stricken areas get back on their feet more quickly. The 500 million euro a year fund was set up to respond to major natural disasters and express European solidarity with disaster stricken regions inside the EU. The EPP group's expert on the issue is Spanish MEP Rosa Estaraz Ferragut. The aim of this amendment is to speed up relief, to make it more effective and to eliminate difficulties after the experiences of the past 13 years. Since its inception in 2002, the fund has been used for dozens of disasters ranging from earthquakes to floods and from drought to forest fires. Two dozen European countries have so far received more than 3 billion euros in relief. Estaraz Ferragut said the improved funding and reaction time will produce immediate results for citizens. What is most important for the citizens is that once a disaster takes place, they will know in a very short time if they can get help from the European Union. That means they will have the chance to receive a cash advance straight away, and will receive the help as soon as disaster strikes. The new guidelines mean that advanced disaster payment limits will be sharply raised, and technical assistance to disaster areas will also be factored in. That's all from Strasbourg. The European election season now kicks off in earnest. Jean-Claude Juncker is the candidate of the EPP political family, running for the presidency of the Commission and of the European Union. He met with the EPP group members to formulate election strategy before taking his message on the road to voters. And finally, yes, remember to go and vote. Do it as your good right and because it's the right thing to do. Find out more about the largest political force in Parliament by going to eppgroup.eu. Thanks for looking in.